from Rasayana and I'm checking in with you, seeing how you're doing on day three of the Kitchari. Um, like I talked about in the earlier videos, you're probably feeling some of the side effects of cleansing and might not be feeling so hot. And I wanted to share with you one of the most foundational practices in a personal Ayurveda practice, which is Abhyanga. Abhyanga is an oil massage done typically with organic sesame seed oil, although coconut oil can be used in the warmer months of summer. And right now uh, I use this as really, this was my first, very first practice in Ayurveda when I first came across it. And for a number of years, it was the only part of my Ayurveda practice. I did this every morning and it was a beautiful and is a beautiful routine and really just helps provide you with the stamina energy wise it nourishes the tissues it activates organ systems by running your hands over certain energy points in the body it creates a grounding calming and nourishing environment for the mind body so i personally do this every morning uh, I just finished my yoga practice this morning. It's a little bit later than usual. It's 9 a.m. right now. And um, after I finish walking you through how to give yourself an Abhyanga at home, I'm going to hop in the shower after a brief meditation practice and then go about my day. So what you need for an Abhyanga at home is your oil. And right now I would recommend an organic sesame seed oil. If that finds if that's a little too heavy for you or you find yourself getting too warm after using it try a more neutral oil like almond oil or safflower oil right now or excuse me sunflower oil um, those are lighter oils and a bit more neutral I would save coconut oil for the warmer months of summer we are still in spring which has a bit of cooler temperatures um, so I would recommend sesame seed oil or if you're working with an herbal thylum that a practitioner has prepared for you or one from some of the vendors that I've provided in your manual, um, then use whatever oil uh, is appropriate. So how I started my first Abhyanga practice at home, I didn't have all these fancy accoutrements. I did just go to the store and get a glass bottle with a pump to put my oil in. And then to warm it, I would put it in a coffee cup like this and then add hot water from my tea kettle in the morning, like so. And then I would go about my business, maybe doing some light housekeeping. And once the oil uh, was warm, then I would start my Abhyanga. And I recommend raising the temperature of the room you're going to be performing your Abhyanga in to a minimum of 71 degrees. That is what my heat is set at right now. Uh, when I'm typically doing this at home, I'm not wearing uh, some sports attire, uh, but this is the uh, PG version of Abhyanga we're doing here today. So um, the room, you know, especially in New England, you don't realize uh, how cold it is. And um, so make sure it's really warm. This will help make for uh, additional grounding effect and calming effect. And we want your muscles to be relaxed. This should be an act of self-love and a meditation in and of itself, not something you're just slapping on like moisturizer and rushing out the door. So do take the time. Uh, to do this. Uh, so now maybe you're getting an idea of why yogis get up so early in the morning. Um, after I did uh, the glass bottle approach in my Abhyanga practice for years, I did go and finally invest in this tea, uh, kind of tea light candle warmer and copper dish. I'll include the link to where you can get this if it's of interest to you by heating the oil over uh, flame itself the actual natural element agni um, adds an additional therapeutic effect as well as the metal itself that the oil is being heated in so copper has wonderful warming properties to it as does um, other metals so that's why often in a lot of ayurvedic treatments you'll see copper or stainless steel being used in the preparation of a lot of these formulas so once you have the room warm and you have your oil warm 
you're gonna take a seat. I usually do this in my bathroom just so that oil is somewhat contained. And um, I also recommend using a space heater if the room is not warm enough. Sometimes I do my abiyanga after my shower and the bathroom is already really warm and steamy and I don't need my space heater then, it's not a problem. So I start seated on the toilet. Right now I'm just on a chair. And um, I'm gonna start with the soles of the feet. So, you know, the feet are what in Ayurveda consider a terminal end in the body. Meaning this is an area where prana flows in and out. There are others, other terminal ends of the body include the crown of the head, the palms, and the belly button. So we really wanna start with the feet. Get a great amount of oil on your palms. Be generous here. Spread it evenly on both your hands. And then, so you can see here, uh, top and bottom. Just do a nice swipe. And then I like to rest in a figure four position with my ankle crossed over the opposite thigh. And just kind of sandwiching my foot, do some circles on the top and bottom, up and down. Now this doesn't have to be a professional technique here. Um, there's no real um, specific approach I want you to, to be preoccupied with right now. I just want you to get the warm oil on and start making the room for this routine in your life because it's a routine of nourishment and love. In fact, in Sanskrit, the word for oil is sneha and sneha is also translated to love. There are many other definitions. Another is fat. So fat is love, right? Fat protects, fat lubricates. So I'm just massaging the top and bottom of my feet, getting each individual toe Yay, toes. And then once the oil has started to absorb, I'll set my foot down and then do the other. I usually like to start with the soles of my feet because it also gives a little bit more time for them to absorb the oil by the time I'm done and have to walk to wherever I'm going. So. That brings me to my other point. When you're preparing for your abiyangas at home, make sure you have everything handy and make sure you have an extra towel or two, as well as slippers or an old pair of socks you can designate. Because let me tell you, from years of experience doing self abiyangas, in my early years, I would trek footprints of oil all throughout the house and uh, you know just created for for more cleaning which uh, you know who's who's got who wants to give more time to cleaning I'd rather go out playing and living and thriving so save yourself the extra housekeeping by making sure you have some socks or something handy afterward So I'm really enjoying my process here and chatting with you. I'm sure most of you are probably at work right now and uh, I will be going into work shortly myself, just uh, having a little bit more leisurely morning and taking the time to share some of my personal approaches to Ayurvedic living with you. So you can of course do this later tonight after your um, taking your your castor oil or your purg purgative um, that's okay you might want to it will be very nourishing this would also be particularly good to do in the evenings if you're having any trouble sleeping uh, it's very grounding and calming for the body and as I said as your hands are running over parts you are stimulating marma points as they're called they're energy points in Ayurveda a very vital energy points and they're sometimes called the seats of consciousness where muscle, tendon, bone, nerve all meet and it's a vital energy point in the body. 
Okay. So now my feet are nice and oiled. My toes are warm. They're not cold. Um, I'm going to set my foot down. And then go back into my oil. I'm just patting my fingertips into my dish and then spreading it evenly on my palms. And then I'm going to work up the body. So shortly you'll see. But I'm just propping my foot up on the chair and doing some circles around my ankle joint. You might also have gotten a bit of your ankle when you were working your foot. The general rule is over the joints you want to do circles. And over the long bones you'll do long strokes back and forth. And these can be gentle. They don't, you don't have to be a professional massage therapist, but if you feel like adding some more pressure or you're starting to feel like certain parts of your body are really asking for more, then go ahead. This is what this time's about. It's about taking care of yourself and nourishing yourself, loving yourself. And then after at least 50 circles, you can bring the stroke up the shins. So, you'll see in a moment when I stand up a little bit better. So be sure to get both the front and back, and I'm just going up and down the leg. I know it's a little difficult to see here, so I apologize as I continue to learn new skill sets myself and use technology and make these videos so appreciate your willingness to go with the flow mm, this feels so nice my skin is just drinking this in there's no rhyme or reason here I'm just literally going up and down both the front and back making sure I get every inch And then I'll go to the other side. Oops, I don't fall over. Circles at the ankle. And then long strokes on the lower leg, shin and calf. Now see my skin already wants more, it's already drank this in, so I'm going to go back into my bowl, take a dip. And with the kind of oil warmer situation I got here, you'll have to intermittently take that top bowl on and off the candle because it does get hot. That metal gets very hot, the oil gets very hot, and you don't want to burn yourself. So use care. Again, have an extra hand towel nearby that you can use as a little pot holder if you need. And uh, be sure to be monitoring the temperature of that as you go back and forth between your dips. But do make sure it's warm. You don't want to massage with cold oil. It's just, oh, skin doesn't take it in. It doesn't feel that great, and um, we want it warm. So Abhyanga is safe to do every day, except for women who are actively menstruating. You don't want to do Abhyanga then, refrain from it, as well as if you are actively sick or if you have a fever or a cough or cold with uh, lots of mucus, lots of kapha. We don't want to add more oil to a kappa situation. We don't want to add more oil to a fire situation if you're having a fever, right? So we want to let the opposite qualities balance. So if you're menstruating or have a fever or not feeling well, skip the abhyanga and rest. Focus on hydration. Great. 
So now I'm coming up to my knee, circles around the knee. I like to just let my palm relax and let the fingers just curl and wrap around the contours of my leg. And I'm just doing circles around the patella, getting the top of the knee. After you've gone in one direction for 15, 20 times, go in the other. If you're curious about the music that's playing behind me, it's a CD I bought when I was backpacking in Kerala, India. Kerala's Considered the home of Ayurveda. Circles on the sides. And this music was playing at one of the Ayurveda clinics I went to when I was getting a, a, a treatment. And I remember thinking that the drums and the flute were like peppy, you know? It had a little pep in its step. And I uh, thought it would be appropriate to play today in balancing out some of the kappa-like energy that is typical this time of year, which is heaviness, dullness, and sluggishness. Great. Make sure you also get the back of the knee, some circles. Although it may not seem like a lot, like we're just giving ourselves a nice moisturizing massage, when it becomes your daily practice and you're doing it over the span of years or decades, what you're doing is slowing down the drying out of the tissues. What you're doing is slowing down degenerative processes like osteoporosis, arthritis, going to the other knee, just spreading it around and then beginning my circles on top. Now generally, if you're doing your Abhyanga in the morning, you may choose to make it a little more vigorous, a little more quick tempoed, just to get things moving throughout the day. Uh, really kind of depends on what you need. If you choose to do your Abhyanga's in the evening, or in addition to the morning, you want to do another one in the evening or late afternoon. I would recommend a much slower tempo and much more calming, relaxing music. The music I'm playing today might be a little too stimulating for an evening Abhyanga if my intent is to downshift the mind and be ready to sleep. Reversing directions. coming to the sides. Mmm, feels so good. I've had a really, really busy week. In between these videos and answering your questions, I'm seeing clients and giving treatments and consultations and teaching yoga classes. So this feels especially nice to share with you today. Getting the back of the knee with some circles. I recommend that once you get to this point in your Abhyanga and you're standing, wherever you're practicing, you're either standing on a towel or a bath mat. Sometimes after doing my feet, I'll immediately put on my designated Abhyanga socks. And that way I don't bring my footprints all around and my toes stay warm. Mmm. I'm 
dip back into my oil here. Continue working up the thigh, long strokes and the long bones. So getting all planes of the thigh underneath, inner thigh and groin, the top, and the lateral edges. And again, just going back and forth full palm contact. And if my legs are feeling a little sore, particularly after I've gotten off the tennis court or the ski slope, I like to give my thighs maybe a little bit of squeeze I'll actually put my hand in this V formation and kind of cup the quad up at the hip and then gently press down and squeeze like a gentle pincer grip as I slide down the quad to the knee and gently lift up. And I'll do that with both hands and lean my torso and really give my quads a nice working here. Now at this stage in your cleanse, you might want to have a more vigorous massage like this and literally continue oleating the body just like you've been doing with the ghee in the morning. Preparing for that ama to get out. And again, making sure you get the bottom. Now I'm going to switch. Get a little message there. And going back and forth. And once I've done my thighs, I'll then continue on for the buttocks and abdomen, which you will do circles on. So you'll also do circles on the hips here, on the side, on the glute, and then working your way up to the low back. And once you've completed that, you can have a seat back down. And then continue. I like to work up the belly. So well, I guess I'll stand so you can see better. Um, and again, working in circles on the belly. Now when you rub the belly and you go in circles, you always want to make sure to begin in the lower right quadrant of your abdomen and work the stroke up toward the lower rib and then over to the left across the transverse colon and then down the left side to the lower left quadrant toward the bowels. This is a direction of digestion. Going clockwise, it's a direction of the planets around the sun. Oh, Magni. And again, these can be with 
as much pressure or tempo as you feel appropriate. This feels good. My abs are kind of sore from some of the core work I did in practice this morning. Making sure to get the sides of the rib cage as well and as much of the low back as you can. If you have a partner who's interested in self care and Ayurveda, this could become a new thing to explore together, new habit. Trust me, you'll sleep great. Now, moving up the body to the breasts. And now for ladies in particular, you really want to make sure you're spending time bringing circulation around the breasts. There's a high concentration of lymph nodes around the breasts and into the armpit area. And we know that lymph is one of our first defenses for and against disease. And so by making sure lymph is moving, it doesn't become stagnant or too thick as it often does in kappa imbalances uh, that, you know, we don't want to cause problems. So again, working in circles around the breasts, just like you did for the belly and hips. I also like to personally work in figure eights with one hand coming around and then the other hand doing the same and creating this motion back and forth. That's of course when you maybe have a little bit more practice. You can always just go in circles. You can come up underneath and again with that V shape with the hands, do a gentle lifting off under the underside of the breast with a gentle squeeze and pinch as you come up. So really making sure that you're getting that movement and raising one arm, getting circles in the sides and around the armpit. Now this is just as important for the gentleman too. But since ladies are often much more restricted in this area with wearing bras and the like, it's especially important for women. So working that around. Sometimes, again, I'll take that pincer grip with the palm as I have one arm up, and I'll work from the bicep down to the armpit and do a gentle squeeze when I get to the pec. And sometimes I've just had a really tight, uh, shoulder girdle from giving so many massages all week or doing so much plank pose and chaturanga down dogs I mean I use my arms a lot so continuing upwards chest circles on the shoulders long strokes on the long bones so I'm going to do that on both sides just for the upper arms so I can distribute the oil. And then I'll come into the actual Abhyanga again, coming to my circles on the shoulders. Ugh. And then reversing the direction of your circles. And sometimes I again find that pincer grip and come up grabbing that deltoid and just doing a nice little squeeze and lifting up. Oh, so nice. I'm getting inside massage therapy tips here at Rosiana. And really it's just about what feels good to you. So use that really as your guide. And then continuing down to the upper arm, doing strokes up and down. Now, if you choose to do your Abhyanga after your shower or bath, you will want to give yourself at least 30 minutes for the oil to continue to absorb into the skin before you get dressed. Otherwise, your clothes will absorb the oil and over time they'll start to smell and maybe stain. I'm going to the other side. Now 
Now classically, a bianga would also include oiling your scalp and uh, putting a fair amount of oil on your head every day. Now, here's how I feel about that. I think it's a great practice, and I think that doing it daily is a bit much for our modern lifestyles. I mean, I believe that was recommended at a time before shampoos and showers, maybe, were as readily available. And uh, most of us can't go into work or start our day with oily heads, not, not to that extent. So, I say oil the scalp once a week as a general maintenance. Unless you're working with a specific pathology and in that case you're going to follow the instructions of your practitioner. Oh, this feels good. You can even bring those circles up to the upper trap. Oh. And then again, working the upper arm up and down. Give me one more oil. Now, if you find that you put on too much oil and you need to get going and you don't have 30 minutes for it to absorb, then go back into the shower. Just take a rinse. And instead of wiping off the oil when you get out, just blot it with a towel. And then you should be good to go without ruining your clothes. Great. Getting some more oil as I continue to work down the arm. Circles on the elbows. Long strokes on the forearm. Again, just first applying the oil and getting it distributed, seeing how my skin absorbs and if I need more. Using a moment to assess and anoint. And then moving into my stroke. So, just circles. I like to do circles like so on the elbow. And then sometimes, depending on how tight my forearms are, if I've been doing a lot of, again, <laughs> massaging or, uh, a lot of bookkeeping too, like lots of typing and computer work. Again, pincer grip at the base of the elbow and then making circles like so. And letting that thumb and fingertips come across back and forth. I'll do that both below the elbow and above, depending on how I feel. And then I'll also do circles on the top of the arm at the elbow joint, right here. Getting the inside too. And up and down the forearm. Other side. Coming down to the wrists, circles here. And then 
coming off the hand too, getting the back of the hand and all the fingers. And then doing each finger itself, coming down individually. I'm just kind of giving each finger a little show me the money action there. Show me the joy. We'll do top and bottom and sides. If you got the time or inclination, you can even do circles over each individual joint in the finger. You know, make this your meditation whenever you have time for it. And usually what's left on my hands I can use for my face or I might at that point switch out to a different oil for my face some people might find sesame a little too heavy so in that instance you could use the lighter oils I mentioned earlier almond oil sunflower oil or you can use uh, an Ayurvedic herbal oil called neem N E E M. neem is the name of the herb and the plant and it has wonderful antibacterial, antimicrobial, and fungal properties to it, and is exceptional for pitta-like skin conditions and skin rashes and instances where heat is trying to leave the body. It's wonderful for the skin and, and gentle for the face. You could use that, or uh, I really like the facial oil, day and nighttime face facial oil by Sharada Remedies. I buy the, their uh, jasmine one, and it is just so, so great. Uh, but it's a little more pricey, so I don't use that every day. I'll use that for my exceptional pampering days, usually to keep my consistency in Abhyanga and keep it in my life time-wise. I take what's left on my hands and use it on my face. So again, first, just get it on, no rhyme or reason. I actually need just a touch more. Hmm. Getting the neck. And then once it's on, I like to begin with some eyebrow strikes, strokes, <laughs> not strikes. And just gently but firmly pressing the fingertips into the eyebrow ridge and just tracing it from the center to the outside edges. Be amazed how much tension we just hold up here at the brow, it feels lovely. If you find any particular areas that need more, like at the temples, I like to do some circles. Make sure that you're massaging the oil all the way up into the hairline. So 
don't cheat yourself. Even if you're not going to do your scalp, make sure you do get all toward the hairline. The hairline is where a lot of negative particles tend to collect energetically in terms of our thoughts and emotions. So keeping that kind of border oleated helps encourage that negativity to glide off and out of our consciousness. And I'll do some up and down swipes on the bridge of the nose. Maybe taking that into some U shapes under the cheeks or doing some circles down in one direction or doing circles the opposite way. It's really nice after I come off a brow stroke to just continue down the temples and around the jaw and back up the nose. You really do. Again, what feels right. You're not going to be massaging this on your eyelids, just around the eye orbit. And then coming to the jaw. Oh, it feels so nice. And my jaw's relaxed. Obviously, I'm chatting with you right now, but even when I'm not, there's a slight separation of my lower jaw from the top. So it's relaxed. Just working my fingers where it feels good. And kind of a chin and upper lip swipe. Circles on the cheeks. And that's it. So you can spend as much time as you'd like playing with that. Um, I usually will continue on by oiling my ears, both massaging the lobes up and down, and depending on what's going on for me, I might actually also insert some, some oil, some jojoba oil into my ear. Uh, I don't recommend you do that. Uh, that's more for an advanced practice, um, and uh, if you're interested in knowing more about it, you can let me know, and I'd be happy to tell you more. Um, after oiling my ears and everything else, I usually will oil my nose. I'll do my neti pot practice, and I'm not going to show that to you today, but I will, while I have everything out, oil my nose. Now, for the oil in your nose, you're not going to use just any oil. The tissues in the sinuses are very delicate, so you want to use either plain organic sesame oil, plain coconut oil. This is the oil that I started with in the coffee mug and poured the warm water from the tea kettle. Or you can use an herbal blend. Banyan has a really nice nasya oil. It's called N-A-S-Y-A. Nasya is Sanskrit for nose. And uh, one of the reasons why it's important to keep the nose equally nourished and lubricated is because it is a doorway to consciousness, to the mind. So keeping that free of debris and keeping the tissues nice and moist will allow them to be much more effective in uh, protecting yourself from allergies and allergens and particularly in the springtime, lots of you will have a flare up and allergy. So you can either put a few drops in an eyedropper, tip the head back and put two to three drops in each nostril and then gently sniff it in. You'll feel it slide down the back of the throat. It's okay, you can swallow. Most people have to work up to that I find. So I'm gonna recommend you just use a Q-tip and put a dab of your oil on the end and swab each nostril. So I just put a dab of some of the coconut oil here that I have because the Abhyanga oil I was just using is a Maha Narayan blend with great herbs for inflammation in the tissue and joints, but not good to put up the nose. So 
gentle swabbing. Yeah, literally massaging the septum, the skin that separates the nostrils, and then out on each side, get the bottom and the top. <clears throat> I like coconut because then they can just keep smelling it for the rest of the day. It's so good. <laughs> Although I do like Banyan's Nausea Blend too. I have to say, I like theirs better than the Sharada. Sharada is really good too. And they put, but they put in um, a bit of eucalyptus oil, I believe, which, you know, is wonderful too. But somehow I either, I like my eucalyptus on its own. Um, not quite mixed in with the other um, Ayurvedic herbs. I like the Ayurvedic herbs and, and how they smell and how my body and cells kind of react to it better. Um, but it's just a matter of personal choice, you know. Again, the importance is just getting the oil on and creating space in your daily life for this to become a routine and furthermore a ritual, an act of self-love. So not very glamorous or sexy, I know, but let me tell you what is sexy, longevity and having vitality and thriving in life and not just surviving. So I hope you do well with your own Abiangos at home. Get yourself set up. You're probably going to really want this tomorrow after you've done the purge tonight and you're feeling perhaps a bit weak and, uh, and vulnerable, but you don't need to wait until tomorrow to do that. You can do it right now and uh, go about your day with a nice coating of sneha and love and intention and uh, keeping that prana sealed in so you can go about your day and your duty and share your light with the world. Namaste.